Our team needs to get to wherever the patient is as fast as possible. That's a life and death situation. We got alerted about a Marine who was in a helicopter crash in Australia and he needed to be picked up. We had to get to him fast because an infection had set place and we needed him to get back to the United States for, for a higher echelon of care. The patient had uh, mucormycosis, which is an invasive fungus. When we arrive in a place that we're given 17 hours, it just so happened to be Joint Base Pearl Harbor. You have to control the way you feel. You have to put yourself into a place to where you can sleep, you can rest, uh, kind of get your mind off of what is about to happen because at the 24 hour mark, it is go time. There is nothing but thinking about mission. As a team, we decided to go pay our respects at Pearl Harbor. We were on a mission to go save a life. So we went and paid respects to the lives that were lost. We had to spend 17 hours in Hawaii uh, for some downtime for the crew. Uh, but then we uh, took the same C-17 to Australia uh, where we met the Australia team. Uh, we had about 10 hours in Australia. There we were able to go more in depth with the doctors and his care team there uh, to talk about his history and everything that they had done for the past five weeks and then we were able to have a little bit of rest before we were hopping on our C-17 to make the 8,200 mile journey uh, back to San Antonio. The Australia team uh, brought him by ambulance to the aircraft and it was then that we were able to take over the Marines' care. At that point, um, we were all hands on deck uh, for 18 hours. It was the longest flight in ECMO history. On the landing uh, going into Hawaii, um, we realized that on the descent, our uh, ECMO machine had shut off. Uh, it just completely stopped, uh, which is a complication of ECMO. Sometimes you do get clots that stop the machine, and this is what happened in this case. I vividly remember, like, I looked down the aisle and Juhas and me made eye contact. And that's when I was like, okay, well, like the plane's landing, it doesn't matter. This machine's not working and the patient's on it. Immediately, uh, Captain Wood and I uh, stood up and we went over uh, and tried to do some um, emergency procedures to get the pump started again. However, we were unsuccessful. Uh, the AE team that flew with us uh, was great and they got me uh, strapped in and so during landing I could still be standing up and taking care of the patient. And then once we landed, Captain Wood came back over and the two of us did a circuit change there on the taxiing runway where it has never been done in DOD history. Luckily from there on out, the longest leg of our mission was smooth selling. The transition to BAMSIs, I think in the end, everyone starts to realize it's almost over. Like we, we're almost at that point to where we can say mission success. He was just a couple days at BAMSI, still really weak. PT has already started, but I think at that time he was only tilting. So we put him in a special bed and the bed tilted up so that his feet and legs can start getting weight. When he first started waking up, he, he was like ready to do PT, ready to, to keep working and he, just to get better. He, he just wanted to get better. For sure in my book, that's one of the strongest things you can do. The Australian team was fantastic. They provided such good care to our service member and we are very grateful for them. On most of our missions, we will try to hang a U.S. flag, um, and it's our way to pay gratitude towards the family, of uh, the service member that we're trying to get home. We will fly the flag and then present a certificate to the family with the flag saying that it was flown on mission for their family member. And it's just our way to say thank you for allowing their family member to serve this nation.
You are doing awesome. I'm so proud of you.